pleasure to be with you all this morning. Thanks for coming. Um, I'm going to get settled in with you as we do a meditation, if that's all right. Like any good meditation, let's start with just getting that breath going. I want to hear a deep inhale. Waking up that line. Inhale. Release. Every breath is the breath of God moving in as and through you. Um, for me, Meditation is about stealing the mind and making the intention to be fully, completely present with you, you with me, open and receptive to whatever decides to come into the room. And I tell you right now, there's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place today, and I hope you can tap into that. So let's just take a moment to close our eyes. Just follow your breath. says it's like a cat watching for a mouse in a hole. <laughs> That's our thoughts. And as we stand and become a master observer of our thoughts, kind of the miracle happens. It begins to, what emerges is this space between us <laughs> and that monkey mind, that busy, busy mind. So I know you come to the service just like I do, with thoughts of how your morning went, thoughts of what you are going to leave to go to. Give yourself the intention and the permission to release the past, release the future. to just soak up the beauty of this present moment. This time of year, we speak a lot about let there be peace on earth. <laughs> this idea that's sort of macro that we just wish on this planet at this time of year. The deeper call is to realize that we are to be the peace we want to see in the world. So as, you're, as we're sitting in this sacred silence for a moment before we get silly and have fun together, I just want you to maybe take in this verse and set the intention with me that we're gonna explore what we can do to be, to be the peace that we wanna see in the world. on earth and let it begin with me let there be peace on earth the peace that was meant to be God as 
good y'all it does um, <laughs> testing one two yes Completely nervous, and as a kid who grew up in the church, I have a lot of respect for this space here, so I'm very honored to be here, and uh, I think it's pretty amazing that you would have me speak. So I, I, I know that I can only speak what is experiential. <laughs> I did not bring a whiteboard or a marker, just sharing sort of, as we would call old school, my testimony, and knowing that working these principles and finding my own path is something I have found time and again. When we share our stories, we find connections, real human connections with people who know what we're going through. So I'll just introduce myself. So my name is Levi. I am from Oliver Springs, Tennessee, graduating class of five people. I was valedictorian with a C average. Thank you. No lie, if you've seen the movie October Sky with Jake Gyllenhaal, that's my hometown. That's my hometown. We make all the fudge that you buy at the Cracker Barrel. <laughs> that is our claim to fame. My mother is president of the Brenda Lee Fan Club, if y'all know Rocket Around the Christmas Tree. So, so much of my upbringing was not only around Brenda Lee, which was an incredible influence because she was never affected by the fact that she was the world largest selling female artist. Spending summers on her tour bus, she was a perfect example of a gal who would go get her dress at Walmart, go and do the work and sing because that's what she did. She got the joke. It wasn't about being performative. It wasn't about her ego. It wasn't about any of that. She was just wanting to be of service with her gift. And I think that that's a great reminder for any of you who are in any sort of field, which is many, many of us who uh, come to things with a spirit of service. My mom, though, <laughs> Okay, so when you get to know the people in the, a Brenda Lee fan club, there's about four or five super crazies, right? Okay, and, and they have to discover every amazingly unique uh, collector's item of Brenda's that you can find. And so these four or five people always surrounded the home. I grew up with them. So when they would find a German 45 of I'm Sorry by Brenda Lee, they would sit and very peacefully deliberate on who was going to be the one to take that home. 
who was going to be the one to take that, that piece home? And they were all, all very, you know, they were good friends. It was, it was, it was a pretty, pretty amicable experience for all of them until they found a dress that Brenda Lee wore to sing for the Queen of England. And this was a beautiful red chiffon dress with long red chiffon sleeves, absolutely gorgeous. The, probably the coolest find I ever saw as a kid growing up. And I was really excited to see what they do with this. So the four or five of them gathered around, and things got a little ugly. We started finding out what people really thought of each other. They could not find a peaceful solution, so they cut the dress in five pieces. My mama got the sleeves, though. So when my dad and my brother would run off to a UT football game... And we would sit and watch them peel out of the gravel drive. She'd run to her dresser drawer and she'd pull out them red chiffon sleeves. And she'd shimmy them up over her house coat. And she'd put a Brenda Lee record on the record table. And she would sit me down with all my stuffed animals, grab a curling iron, and proceed to lip sync to me for three hours. <laughs> this woman had the nerve to act surprised when I told her I was gay. Growing up in church as a kid, I was a very devout kid. I came out of the gate singing. I felt like, well, I've been anointed. I will be a healer through music. And I'll never forget going to church one day, and it was the 80s, the AIDS crisis. It was all in the news. And the pulpit, the religious right, was talking about it. And I remember, because I had a crush on the pastor's son, <laughs> Who was playing footsie with me during the whole service? <laughs> the pastor standing there and saying, these people are an abomination to God. Now, as someone who loved the Lord, I mean, like, uh, he, I, somehow in a spiritual home, the Lord, God, the God was like this father to me. And, and all of a sudden, I felt as though I didn't have the approval of my heavenly father. And as, as a kid who's praying and reading the scriptures every day is now groveling on his carpet, praying, please don't turn your face away from me. Please don't turn your face away from me. It was then I made an agreement. The church taught me how to hate myself. It did. A little kid, impressionable, so sincere, so in love with the spiritual journey, decided that I was not worthy. It's interesting, the old paradigms we make in agreements with ourselves, right? You have pain. You have pain. Relationships that don't work out. When you're young, agreements that we make about ourselves and our own self-worth. And we forget sometimes that we have the power to rewrite that script. And so I want to play around with this idea a little bit today. And I'm going to share a couple songs that are original because music is therapy for me. And I feel like a lyric or two might help me drill down a little deeper into that if you're willing to go there with me. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> As a kid, now you've, I've set it up, you know I have, uh, I look back at my life and now I've, I've reframed it, I've learned how to reframe it. I've had a lot of growth opportunities. <laughs> you know, I mean, these days you could, I could write a victim resume a mile long. I mean, everything from six years of conversion therapy to surviving a meth addiction to uh, one thing that I'm going to zero in on today just because it helps us serve the point. Uh, is domestic violence. Boy, did I have a knack for finding all the men that want to beat you. And my first boyfriend uh, and my, I ended up a certain husband of mine uh, creating that situation. Now, I'm going to use, use this very lightly. I don't want it to get deep because we know our story is not who we are, right? So let's just let that go. Who cares? We all have a story like that. I ain't special. But w the purpose of it is to go back, and I know that you as a congregation have probably heard this before, and this really, really helps me. The four stages of consciousness. Do you remember hearing about this? I know Michael Barnard Beckwith has talked about it a lot. I know that if you don't remember what it is, you could find it on YouTube and look it up. Four stages of consciousness, but this right here. 
what a great foundation to place in this conversation when we want to move, let there be peace on earth, you see how I'm tying all this together, from this macro idea to showing up and handling your stuff so that you can, on a micro day-to-day -day level, really be the peace that you want to see in the world. So it takes work. And I think a lot of times in New Thoughts, I've been here, a New Thought saved my life. I got sober with New Thought. This is why I became a licensed spiritual practitioner. I was getting sober time and I couldn't stop. I didn't mean to. <laughs> you know, I just kept going because I had to. But the truth of the matter is sometimes we like a lot of feel good. You know, fashionable, trendy spirituality is all over the place now. And the beauty of it, the payoff, is we want to dig a little deep. So with that said, I want to, I want to kind of invite you to maybe think about, when I just kind of share a song with you, who in your life might fit this scenario? Because, again, it's not about me sharing my autobiography with you. This lyric is universal, and I feel like I, I want to just invite you to call up any, any place where this may live in you. This is a song that I wrote to help liberate myself from the things that were keeping me from realizing my godness and knowing the freedom. So we might talk a little bit about forgiveness. Just the mention of your name, I get a sudden rush of pain and add up all the things I blame you for. I bet if I could count the ways I've let this hatred have its way I'd wonder what the hell I've been living for And it's no good Holding on to a world of wrong No, it ain't no good It's eating me alive What if I liberate you Maybe I'd be liberated too If I forgive you Forgetting would be a lot easier to do If I could liberate you In this life we're all the same We fall until we find our way And I ain't no exception to the rule I want the grace to let you go But when the rubber meets the road This rambling man still has a point to prove And it's no good to keep you bought in these prison walls No, it ain't no good I gotta let you go What if I liberate you? Maybe I'd be liberated too If I forgive you Forgetting would be a lot easier to do If I could liberate you is mine to choose what if I what if I you see if I forgive you forgetting would be a lot easier to do what if I I'd be liberated too If I forgive you Forgetting would be a lot easier to do If I could liberate you If I could liberate you I 
I got a divorce. That whole album, Liberated, is about the beginning of that relationship to the end and finding my spiritual freedom from it. But about the time I wrote that song, I was trolling him on Facebook, <laughs> trying to figure out how unhappy he was, because I knew it'd make me happy if he was unhappy. And one of the things that I actually found to be true, and the reason that I want to start with forgiveness when I think about how can we free ourselves to be the peace that we see in the world is because so many of us get stuck here, you know, right? I mean, I, in, in so many years of my conversations, you know, we're doing the meditations, we're doing the work, and a lot of areas of our life, we're able to show up and be the love. But when that trigger points hit, right? When that, when that thing, not him, not her, Mm, don't say that. It reminds me of this. That's where the good stuff is, right? Because our emotional guidance system is telling us that there's great opportunity for growth there if we're willing to look at the ugly. And isn't that a prejudgment anyway to call it ugly? I mean, that's just the beauty of this wonderful, wonderful universe of contrast, <laughs> right? And so... I, I, I want, within the context of this, let's, 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 re, let's review like really quickly the, the four stages of consciousness, if, if you don't remember. Life happens to me, right? I could say that I'm a victim for having these men that want to beat me. I'm a victim for six years of conversion therapy and all this. I, I'm a victim. Like, life happens to me. The second stage of consciousness, life happens by me. I'm starting to realize that I'm a manifester. And then, oh, wait a minute, this vibration I'm giving off, these thoughts, these feelings are actually a radio dial, a frequency. And you're going to tune into K-Joy? <laughs> are you going to turn into k <laughs> I mean, the truth is, knowing that then allows us to be more constructive about what we're creating in our life, right? So life happens by me. That's it's progress, right? Life happens in that stage three. Life happens through me. I am now a channel, a conduit for something that is greater than myself, right? And so I'm still by me. I'm manifesting. I'm aware of all those things, but I'm starting to let go more and not outline what God has for me in store, right? And letting the will of God come in and come through. And then that fourth stage as me. I'm going to have to even micromanage so much anymore because we're remaining in that space of like infinite intelligence is just going before us, making our way straight. That's beauty. Now, don't buy it if you think this is linear and that we learn one by one because we embody this wonderful, beautiful teaching Beautifully messy. <laughs> there are things that I still want to, I find myself being all victim -y about, and there are things that I feel like I am walking Christ, you know? And you are too. You're the same way, probably, because as you play with these concepts, you find there's spaces that it's easier for you, and then there's spaces that's, that's not so easy for me. Um, I realized that when I was sort of looking around, hoping that he was, you know, my victim nature was pointing and saying, I hope that you feel bad too. I realized a very interesting point. And maybe this is helpful for you. If you're where I'm at, and I know I felt led to talk about this, so I know there's somebody here who needs it. Um, I realized that I was the only one suffering. The lyric right there, you ain't losing no sleep, lying there thinking about me. When am I going to believe that peace is mine to choose? It's the whole... Eight years of a grudge, and it was always my choice. My choice. I am the one who put myself through that emotional hell. And he was just doing the same thing over and over again. Again, I'm just speaking from experientially, um, and uh, I know that you all have someone in your life that can relate to this as well. Number two, though, once I realized that I was the only one suffering and that he wasn't, something else occurred to me. I'm interchangeable. It ain't personal. <laughs> because he's going to be doing exactly what he's doing. These people in our lives are going to be doing what they're doing, regardless of the person, regardless of the location, regardless of the congregation, regardless of where we are. So our choice, our decision to not take this personally and just to take it as information. What is that information? Well, let's move on to three, and this is a harder pill to swallow. 
I'm looking, and I'll tell you how, why it was hard for me. It's, uh, you know, my, my mom found out that I was gay because she saw the welts on my face. That's how she put it all together. So you look at this, and it feels hard to say, I'm just going to say it. I was a vibrational match to that. That's the spiritual pill I have to swallow, y'all. And I say that with as much tenderness and compassion as possible because I wasn't always there. And I know someone here is not there yet. And I know that actually is a rub for maybe someone. But in this web of illusion, this matrix that we live in, this infinite, this subconscious intelligence that only ever gives us exactly what our vibration is, only knows yes. Go back to that little boy who made the agreement that he was absolutely worthless. Worthless. How could I be a vibrational match to anything but someone mirroring back to me the same idea of worthlessness that I was holding? When I first came across that concept, I thought that it was so insensitive. How could you say this to me? I'm a victim. And on a certain level of consciousness, I want to validate that for you because you know what? It is true. But we are called, deep call and deep, we are called to understand those experiences like we're in a spiritual laboratory or you wouldn't be here. You're curious about how to see more of it as I was curious. I tell you one thing now. <laughs> Someone like that would never enter my matrix anymore. They just wouldn't. I'm not a vibrational match to that anymore. I have, over years of sobriety and done my work, have become a vibrational match to someone who absolutely adores me and loves me. Now, that's not about me. Again, it's about us. It's about us collectively understanding that we don't have to stay where we are when it hurts like that. That all we have to do is realize that we have the power. We are the final authority on what we're bringing into our life, correct? Does that authority feel daunting sometimes in situations that we don't feel capable of claiming that much power because it almost makes us have to swallow a pill of like, well, I guess I really need to do the uncomfortable work in order to find the peace within me so that I can walk through life being the peace that I want to see in the world and maybe not holding all the grudges. I don't the thing I take away from it is, regardless of whether this relates to you or not, is this, the buttons that get pushed through life, the pain points that keep us from being that source of peace at our family meetings this holiday season, when we're with the family members that we don't particularly agree with politically, when we're with the, those that we have uncomfortable history with, the interesting point is just to simply do the work before you're there. <laughs> you know, do the work now. It's not about the holidays and behaving on Christmas Day or on the holiday. It's about your invitation to show up for yourself every day. And that's really how you be the peace that you want to see in the world. Um, I've always thought that whether I was stepping into a life of sobriety or talking about domestic violence or conversion therapy, or any of, the, any of the above. I'm grateful for what I said in the very beginning, and I hope you are too. Our opportunities of growth may be a more profound calling than you think. And I want you to think about this. Who may be, okay, first of all, identify your pain point, what you're called to do to transmute that to your own power. Is there not one person in your life who needs someone to be the authority on that thing so that you can light their way. That's what service is all about. So this is not just about us moving inward and aligning ourselves with that infinite healing, that infinite uh, uh, grace and compassion and, 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 and the renewal that happens when we begin to live daily in meditation and align ourselves with that infinite intelligence, that infinite joy, that infinite life, that infinite love, that's good. But take it one step further and you might find yourself the opportunity to use your, your pain as the power that becomes the authority to help someone else. What a gift this holiday season, right? If you go into those situations with that mentality, you're just going to be curious 
You're going to be curious on how to take your own experiences and maybe find that quiet moment where you can extend yourself in a way you haven't before, and it might be helpful to someone. I think, lastly, I would like to suggest for myself and, and all of us that coming out of old paradigms, coming out of old residual energy where we're attracting the things that aren't uh, reminiscent of our greater God self that we've come to know, it's so important to have a vision, right? I love the old scripture that says, without a vision, the people perish. When we don't get clear about what we want, how can I find the new love of my life? And I'll tell you, no, I'm going to sing it. I'll tell you. Once I finally got sober and got out and got through some, a lot of this stuff, I decided I was going to, because I was now in practitionership class, I wrote down nine things I wanted in my partner with the most feeling tone I could possibly inject into them. And every morning and every night, as crazy as it probably seems to any of my roommates, I would read them, I was, da, 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 and I would just like proclaim them and proclaim them. And I'm telling you, I am now married five, been with somebody for 14 years, and they are every one of those on that checklist. They, I mean, they are. But that's, that, all that is in the, in the laboratory of our life, laying our spiritual life onto a laboratory table, all that is is a, is a demonstration of intention, right? And so I kind of wanted just to add this song because towards the end of... <laughs> this is a song about me imagining the love that I would love to have. But also, again, as we're doing a spirit talk, find a way that it relates to a piece of your life that... The same, the, whatever this vibration and feeling tone through this song, you want to feel that kind of love, that kind of unconditional love, that kind of acceptance from someone, from a job, from family, whatever, the, whatever your, it is for you. I'll let the song speak for itself. <clears throat> mm-hmm. I think just knowing that this is possible now never would have occurred to me before. That's the power of getting a vision, right? Come lay down in your head No emotion spared, no confession left unsaid It's all out in the open Baby, all of us are broken Did you think that I would leave That I would turn and walk away No, I am afraid Let it fall like rain Let a thousand tears wash away the years of pain I know trust is never easy And I need you to hear me This doesn't change the way I feel Love is real if it is brave And I am not afraid Drive your doubt away 
for I am man Frighten me, my love, for I am unafraid. I am unafraid. I am. I guess to, to wrap up and, and wish you all a very happy holiday and my gratitude for being able to hang out with you all and just speak and talk, uh, I, I think it's important to remember that a paradise is yours to the degree that you can imagine it. And uh, we, we've hit a lot of different parts of our journey, but this whole vision, this goal, this heart's desire to be living life as me, God through me, is entirely possible. Don't let the mundanity of showing up here, going through the routine, cause you to hear with deaf ears the magic and the miracle that is available to you by this teaching. You know, I think that we need a renewal sometimes. Things aren't the same as they were during COVID. Things have changed. And it's easy to find our, ourself a little lost in where do we go from here, not only just individually in our spirituality, but collectively as a congregation, as a community too. So let that beautiful vision that I had for a love that honored me and respected me be the same feeling tone that you have, not only individually, but collectively as a community to say, where can we make that kind of unconditional love, that kind of, that kind of generosity, that kind of gratitude, that kind of compassion for each other? It may be that church itself becomes very community-oriented and that those who may be watching at home find ultimately that a world who continues to be here becomes more and more alone and that we actually need to put this down and build community events, ways of connecting with like-minded individuals, right? Because collectively, right? that it becomes about us connecting, not, not here and there, not this, not that, but us finding a way to strengthen as a group together and have these conversations, sharing your stories, sharing your experiences, your heartbreaks, whatever that may be. So with all that said, I hope something lands with someone and I just inspire you to vision the heights of peace for yourself, of healing for yourself, uh, and have a blessed holiday season. Uh, walk in the light of that love, knowing that it is shining through you as you imagine paradise for yourself. And it's a process, it's not an arrival point. Be in the mess be in the journey, be in, the, be, in the, be in all the questions. It's all all right because God's right there too. Um, right? Yeah. Amen. Thank you all for having me. I will see you soon. Thanks. Should I come here? Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.